All right, here we go. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. I am, of course, joined by my friends Emmy and Stephanie, and Emmy from Holistic Genie and Stephanie from Spiritual Perspectives of Our Great Awakening. Before we get into the topic at hand, because boy, do we have a doozy. We are stuck on planet Earth. We, we have no choice but to ride this roller coaster ride. Which will, truth. That's what this means is truth. We can't get <laughs> off this damn planet. So we'll get into that in a minute. But before we get into the topic at hand, I do want to go ahead and share you guys. I am, for me specifically, with 47,000 subscribers, I am heavily shadow banned, you guys. Like the numbers just don't even make make sense. And so I appreciate you guys for sharing my stuff. Um, I know that a lot of people have been telling me that they go, they realize they haven't seen my stuff in a while and they realize that they've been unsubscribed to my channel. Um, and so double check that. I thank you guys so much for helping us out. Um, of course, you're on Esoteric Atlanta, but this is uh, Emmy's page, Holistic Genie with Emmy. Make sure you're subscribed to her. Um, double check to make sure you're still subscribed because they're doing that. And then of course, Stephanie is over here with spiritual perspective of our great awakening. She has a live coming up to this evening too, as well. So uh, make sure you join her over for her live. And um, so before we get into that, Stephanie, before we get into the topic at, at hand, can we ask the cards, why are we so shadow banned? Okay. I think I know why, but It's very frustrating. I will tell you guys when you put this much work into your channel and it gets banned, shadow banned, it's it's very frustrating. But we do appreciate all you guys for helping us out. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Fucking hate when the cards make no sense at all. They don't want okay, to listen. Them. No, listen. I'm going to just I've been reading all day, so bear with me. I'm gonna ask Mr. Odin over here with these other tarot cards. I just used that other deck just now, so maybe I still need to clean off more energy from it. Who knows? So let's see. Well, speaking of guys, while she's pulling, um, I'm going to go ahead and she's got some courses coming up as well. So I will link uh, Stephanie's website down in the description box below if you want to take any pendulum courses or tarot card courses. Um, and I'll let after she pulls, I'll let Steph Stephanie add to that before we get into. I need to explain something with that, by the way. My courses. Okay. So my tarot course, I didn't have enough signups. So I have to push it out a little bit. So I'm going to be actually, I didn't get anybody, any sign, anybody signed up yet for the live tarot course. If you have requested something in my recorded tarot course, something messed up on the website with the dates that will be going out to anybody signed up this week. So the website that I have that I use can be confusing. Um, and then what? I, well, what else am I? Most people signed up literally for my herbal course or my pendulum courses, and I'm not worried about those because those are all good. Um, um this is more or less uh, the, the the tarot courses. So I'm going to be pushing that out probably to the end of November, or something like that, for the first day until I get more signups. Perfect. Um, and then Bryce, did you want me to go into my shadow work my shadow work reading at all? Yeah, well, I was going to see if you wanted to announce that. So I was going to, yeah, if you want to go ahead and, and announce that, you're more than welcome to. Okay. If you are signed up for the 30-day challenge and you want a shadow work reading from me, if you're doing the 30-day challenge, which means you have to be in the signal group, um, you need to message. Message Sorry. me on Signal through the group. So you go into the group, you sign up, you're in the group, you're in the chat in the group. You'll see me, that I'm one of the admins. <coughs> Click on me, message me. I'm offering 25% off. So for an hour, you're getting a full hour reading for $56.50. If you want a half an hour from me, 
That's $26.75 with the 25% off. And that's for people who are doing the work. And I will right now to the signal group in the description box if, if you still haven't found that link. Um, and if you're doing the, the challenge. And I apologize, guys, Stephanie's in a hotel right now. So that's why the internet's a little bit sketchy. So anyway, all right. Okay. So number one, we're shadow banned because. For the light we're of the light <laughs> okay yeah so we're of the light um like trying to isolate segregate you know shut us down kind of a thing i got not gonna last long we had the wheel of fortune with the ace of cups yeah and it got real bad when i announced my uh challenge this is when my shadow ban got real bad I freeze it's okay. Yeah, it's fine. But the dark forces were like, oh, hell no. We don't need these people figuring out that they actually hold the power themselves to to heal themselves and to, to turn this, this ship around. Um, so I figured that's what it was. Um, and I know that the military back channel um, told us that 90% of the truthers were infiltrators. And I began, I mean, off camera, we laugh about it. I'm like, I can name on my hand how many people are actually innocent and good and doing this out of the goodness of their heart so so thank you guys so much uh, you guys have, i've said this before we're going to get into this with emmy in a minute with the astrology of what's going on but when we study deep spirituality this is why we keep telling you this is not about sitting back eating popcorn and watching a movie because if you do that nothing is going to change what do i mean by this we can't heal the macro until we heal the micro this is the michael jackson song man in the mirror you know our wounds our wounds are what vibrationally have allowed for all of this nefarious crazy criminal bullshit to continue so if we want to stop the crazy nefarious bullshit especially with these things these little humans then we have to heal ourselves first because once we raise our vibration up from healing ourselves that behavior cannot cannot exist on this planet no just can't yeah. and so yeah. that's oh yeah ahead, sorry. i was just gonna say everything we see out there everything is a reflection of our collective shadow what we're seeing what is being reflected back to us is our shadow we all have to do our part nobody can do your shadow work for you there are people that can help like stephanie with her cards i can help with reiki if something is coming up in your shadow work and it is just incredibly overwhelming and you need a little bit more help, give me an email. If you want help trying to figure out an issue, email Stephanie. You know, use people that can help you. But no one can do the work for you. We all have to do this. And the sooner we all do this, the sooner the outside will change. Um, Yeah, that's, I mean, that's, that's all I before we get to that she's right because we have three we know spiritually karma is action and reaction it's cause and effect it's our work and we know through spiritual text that i have studied extensively that there are three categories of karmas that each of us are working on that no one gets away with you can't ignore any of these three the first one is your own personal karma from this life and last life so your friction the second one is your inherited karma. So the stuff in your DNA, the emotions that come up that aren't yours, that you literally decide, and you've decided this. So when you're, the sperm hit the egg, whatever that little one little sperm was carrying, that vibration was carrying, and that egg was carrying, you picked that. That was what you picked to take on. So you can't blame these, these issues on your parents or your grandparents. You literally pick that for a reason because it was going to offer you an opportunity to grow but then what emmy hit on is the third karma that's the collective karma every generation every timeline has a collective karma and we spoke about it this this morning on aquarius rising africa the fall of atlantis which you can look at it that way we're here mirroring that back again collectively but even if you take atlantis out of it you look at what an opportunity see this see our generation see what we're going through in 2020 as an incredible opportunity 
We get to be here to work through this collectively to take that quantum leap together. But we can't work on it collectively until we work on it in that first category, which is the individual karma. What? I'm going to sign in on my phone because you guys are freezing like crazy. Okay, cool. We'll just, okay. yeah, I'll sign be back. Out, back in. Okay. Um, and so, and so that is what Emmy is saying. We can't bypass the individual karma that we have to work through just to heal the collective because the collective is made up of a bunch of individuals. All right. It sounds like common sense, but for a lot of people, it's, it's a, it's a really hard concept to understand. We can't, what we've said it before, Emmy, what is it? Um, when you point the finger at someone else, you got three fingers pointing back at you. Mm -hmm. And that even includes people like Bill Gates. And Hillary Clinton. Point the finger at them, you got three. That doesn't mean you're doing the same thing they're doing. It just means that your wounds are allowing it to continue. I hope that makes sense. I'm the tough love teacher. Stephanie's the tough love tarot card reader. I feel like Emmy's the, the kindest of us all. <laughs> I'm like, nope. Nope. <laughs> so, so anyway, so we know and what we wanted to focus on, we talked, uh, the three of us talked and been texting a lot about this. And Emmy and I spoke a lot before Stephanie signed on about this. We know that this week, we're going to be talking about the astrology of this week in particular in this upcoming weeks, because we are coming up to like our second eclipse. And it's a big one. It's a big boy. It's a big old doozy. And it's no coincidence that the midterms are happening this week. That's all I'll say on that, because we don't want to flag anything. But we're not going to focus on that, are we? We're not even going to talk about the macro. We know what's going to happen in the macro is going to happen. But in order to course correct in this opportunity that the planets are allowing us to happen, we got to work on ourself. We got to fix ourself. So with that being said, Emmy, I'm going to put it on gallery because that might help with your internet situation, Stephanie. And I'm going to let you take it away, Emmy. Um, okay. All right. So we have a, I wrote a bunch of stuff down because, oh my gosh, there's just so many points and things to consider and they all um, correspond with each other. And it's all about the inner self and inner work. It, it's really quite, quite fascinating. Okay. So we have a total learner, loon, wow. <laughs> we have a total <laughs> Total it's already happening, guys. It's already eclipse. happening. Here it is. We don't have Mercury retrograde again. Yeah, yeah, right. End of December. End of December. Okay, so total lunar eclipse in Taurus tomorrow. And this this lunar eclipse is working with Uranus and the North Node. Um, everything is in Taurus. And if you guys remember, um, when I talked before, the North Node is where we are going. South Node is where we're coming from. North Node is going where we're going. And Uranus is all about upheaval and chaos and swift moving change. Um, so in this time, it's going to be individually moving you forward and illuminating the aspects and themes for you and in your life that God, universe, source, consciousness, whatever you choose to call higher power is going to highlight and bring to your attention what needs to be healed and purged and cleansed out for you. It's going to be different for, for every one of us. Um, so Venus is the ruler of this lunar eclipse. And right now she is in the opposing sign of Scorpio. So you've got moon, Uranus, north node, and Taurus. And you've got Venus and Scorpio at, on the other axis. And when Scorpio is, or excuse me, when Venus is in Scorpio, um, she's very intense, very, very passionate. There's like a uh, total commitment, a complete focus on whatever it is that you're looking at. It's, it's a time of profound healing and trans transformative love. Um, and then Venus is working with Mercury and the Sun. Mercury and the Sun are also in Scorpio. And if we take a look at um, how Mercury behaves in Scorpio, it wants to get things done. 
It wants to get to the root. The It's very probing, very in, investigative and observes every detail. So if you think about how well this stuff works together in terms of inner work, shadow work, highlighting what it is that you need to focus on and work on, it's really quite profound. And then also the sun is in Scorpio. And when the sun's in Scorpio, you have the enlightened side of things. You can have archetypes like the shaman and the alchemist. Um, again, those kinds of archetypes are really prevalent in doing that deep healing inner work that we're doing this month. Um, you know, there's a lot of bravery and depth and mysticism and transformation when the sun is in Scorpio. And then let's flip to the other side in Taurus. You've got the moon in Taurus, and moon in Taurus is very steady, very trustworthy, comfortable, secure, stable, kind of restrained. Um, it's really got a theme of slowing down and feeling your emotions in your body, um, connecting with nature and art to ground. So you can see how these themes are very similar, but very supportive of each other with this type of, of work right now. And then Uranus, we talked briefly um, about Uranus and Tor Taurus, um, kind of shaky with se security and wealth, um, up upheaval, like economic upheaval. Um, it's a great time to get creative um, with financial endeavors. Um, it's a it's a very inventive and innovative time. Like this would be a great time for these amazing young minds to come up with a better system, a better way of doing something, a better way of investing, a better way of um, doing any kind of economic stuff, especially right now, because we have all of this financial um, upheaval with the inflation you know it, it's just everything is costing so much money and people are, are struggling to pay their bills and get gas and groceries and um it's just a very uh insecure time financially and also um taurus rules food Uranus and Taurus rules food, farming, and agriculture. So I found that kind of interesting. It's like you have this theme going on where Uranus and Taurus is great for like creative new ideas, innovating, um, coming up with new systems. And then it rules food, farming, and agriculture. Like, I mean, this is like the main theme we got going on. I mean, I saw, um, I saw an article this morning that uh, the picture of the article had something, some sign in Philadelphia that's saying that there was no diesel, like they're out of diesel. You know, that is foundational to get our food to people, to harvest the food. How are they supposed to harvest the, the fields without diesel? You know? Um, and then the North Node is where we're going. And Taurus themes are, are slow and controlled sensual, stubborn, comfortable. Um, it is, there are theme, themes of financial security. So it's like, even though everything is kind of crazy with the um, inflation and the recession going on, if you can get past the fear and just start thinking creatively and come up with some kind of side hustle or some kind of um, really great idea for residual income, you know, now would be the time to do that because the stuff isn't going to go away anytime soon, you know, and, and if we're struggling now, I don't think that's going to get any better. So it's like, we really need to pull together and get creative. And now is the time the energies are supporting that kind of endeavor. Um, so, you know, just be smart, be smart about it. Um, be cautious, but don't be so cautious that you're not willing to take a risk because, it's just, it's a good time to do that kind of stuff cautiously. And then, okay, so all of this stuff, all of these themes kind of pointing towards inner work in Taurus and Scorpio. 
And then we've got Saturn in Aquarius squaring all of it. And what a square does is it lights a fire. It is it creates a tension and a friction, like what Bryce is saying. It creates friction for getting this stuff done. Um, and it's not it's not a bad friction. Sometimes squares and oppositions get a bad name because it can be kind of disharmonious. But if you don't have that tension or that friction or that fire under your ass, are you really going to do anything? You know? So, um, Saturn and Aquarius themes uh, shows common sense. It works for project progress. It's very scientific and exact. There's a lot of authenticity. There's a lot of ideas for creating enlightened and enlightened society. Um, there's practical and novel ideas for solving societal problems. So it's like here we have this financial insecurity, this instability, this inflation, but we have all of these energies that are helping and encouraging and supporting us in coming up with new ideas and being creative and innovating and building an enlightened society. How are we going to get there? Um, if we don't put the work in and if we don't put the work in, there isn't going to be any space within us for these new energies to come in and start building things like we have to purge and make space for this stuff to come in and, and help. Can we pause um, there for just one second? Because I want to talk about Saturn more because I know Saturn rules Aquarius, right? Like that's the kind of the ruler of Aquarius. I'm an Aquarian, so I've gotten to know Saturn pretty well. In my life but um and i keep saying you know we always say on this channel or we keep trying to say that darkness cannot create anything only the light can and we know and the whole time you were saying this emmy the whole time you were talking about how the, our structure basically the way that things have been structured in our world by the controllers we would call that very saturnalian in a sense because saturn is father time we know that they that they manipulate saturn and the whole time i was seeing this i was seeing i or maybe i was hearing i don't know saturn going now i get my justice now i can be moved back to, to my original template where god placed me and mm -hmm. so if you think about that even within your own life I know our friend Cindy said when she started working with Saturn, she went and got one of those. Oh, my mind's gone blank now. What are they called? The um, the rice that you or the the sand you flip it over, and it counts the hour. Oh, the hourglass. Yeah, hourglass. Yeah, that does it. Um, that's like days of our lives, you know. Yeah, <laughs> days of our lives. Um, and she started working with that, and so the whole time you were seeing, you were saying that, and if you know the Ramayana. When Hanuman, one of the things he does against Ravana is he lights a fire. He goes and strikes a fire to destroy Ravana. And so I kind of saw Saturn sitting there squaring off with these energies, lighting the fire to also cleanse these energies and bring them back into harmonious balance with Father Time, with the, the true template of, of Saturn. But that's only going to happen if individually we fall into the correct template of Saturn. So if we don't give into the fears, you can acknowledge the fears that the matrix has created. But as you said, create new, bring Saturn back into that new pattern. So I just wanted to just, just pause there for a second because I thought that was just so profound as yes, to absolutely. What, with justice yeah. being served. Because remember guys, God created all these planets. And we know from the, um, apo uh, the apocalypse of Abraham on the Missy books of the Bible, God says the planets are in the fifth firmament, which are messengers. Well, what are angels? Messengers. So planets have an energy, have a purpose, just like Michael has a purpose, just like Gabriel has a purpose. The planets are sentient beings that have a job to do. They, they're here to support us. Even when we think, oh, shit. every time Pluto does something funky, which I know Pluto's doing something funky right now, I'm like, oh. Oh, fuck. Here we go. You know, but Pluto, but it has that purpose because you're right. That's the friction. I hope people are learning this in the shadow work challenge. 
you can't you can't just go to point A to point B without having some ups and downs in between, without going into the into the underworld, without having the the dark night of the soul. Without, I mean, we've talked about that, Stephanie. How many times have the three of us sat and just sobbed our eyes out because it fucking sucks? I have many times doing that this week. Yeah, it's a purging, and it's mm-hmm. necessary because if it's as Emmy said, if you were comfortable, nothing would change. Right. You get complacent. And that's, as our friend Cindy says, that's, that's, there would be no mysticism. There would be no magic if there, if it wasn't for suffering, because suffering at the least of it, suffering causes questions. Why? Why? Why is there pain? Without the pain, pain is real. There is no questions. Without the questioning, there, questioning, there is no mystic. Yeah. So anyway, I don't know if you guys want to, if you want to go on Emmy or where you want to go from there or. That was awesome. Um, I just have a little bit more and then we can do cards with Stephanie. You want? Yeah. Okay. So overall, um, overall, it's going to be a a time of profound healing and transformation. Um, And this healing and transformation will be met with however much you are willing to let go of. So it's like you will heal and transform to the degree that you are doing the work. Does that make sense? Um, I think that there's going to be quite a bit of third eye and heart activations um, depending on what's being removed and cleansed and cleared and, and purged. Um, And definitely down to a cellular level, which is why I think it is so important for us to be doing physical exercise. It just wrings out your tissues. And when you're trying to work through your shadow, you know, the body keeps the score. That book is amazing. If you guys don't have it, I'd I'd go get it. The body keeps the store. We store everything in our tissues. Um, So when you're moving that and squeezing it out and wringing it out of your body, it will purge. And and also another thing I wanted to mention is um, purging can be emotional. It can be anger and sadness and um, just feeling really down, crying. It can also be physical. You can be sweating. You can be vomiting. You could be... Um, going to the bathroom a lot more like this is how our body gets rid of stuff so that's all normal it's all good if you're if you have a day where you're just an absolute basket case and you have just this really wide range of emotions and you have no idea why that's a purge that's purging you know don't try to escape it don't try to bypass it don't try to band-aid it up don't just feel it just feel it like If you're really angry, just kind of lean into that anger and feel it a little more and just like breathe it through your body. Like if you, if you've taken, um, uh, breathing classes for childbirth, sometimes the emotions are so intense. I've used breathing techniques to breathe the, the feeling out, you know, that that's, that's possible. So just know that that stuff is okay. It's normal. It's completely and totally shitty and it's not comfortable. And sometimes, you know, an entire day is spent just feeling. But the more you allow yourself to do that, the more that you're willing to do that, the faster you're going to heal and the more room and space you're going to create for these new energies to come in. And, you know, it. I never used to be a very creative person. I always thought that... Um, You know, my brain was just too analytical to be creative. But once I started doing the work, I noticed over time that um, my creativity was sparked. And I was like, where did this come from? And it's all about the lower chakras. When you move stuff out of the lower chakras, your creativity comes to life, especially the sacral. Like, you know, the sacral chakra is all about creativity. It's, you know, it's where our sexual organs are. That's where we create a baby. You know, I had huge attachments and blockages in my sacral chakra, but one of that, once that stuff started to move out, all of a sudden 
I had creativity and it was, it was, it's so fresh and so new that it was like, um, I don't know. I almost felt like a kid on Christmas. It's like I'm creative. <laughs> well, we said this know. before, so many people who are new to the spiritual path, um, get so focused on the ethereal and the, the third eye and seeing, reading and divinating and all this kind of stuff that they forget that this can't be balanced until that's balanced. Mm. Because the first, it's like a domino effect. The Moladara, the first chakra, if that shit's out of whack, guess what? The rest is too. The rest is too. And you have to descend. You have to go back into the underworld before you can come back up again. And guys, this is the book, The Body Keeps the Score, that Emmy was speaking about. This is an incredible book that really talks about what we're speaking about from actually a very scientific point of view of what's going on. Uh, it's a heavy book to read. Um, I know a lot of people require it in courses and training courses so people understand more about this, but I will put a link to this down in the description box below. It's a very heavy book, but it's very important that a very important book. I go back and reread this a lot. I have like sections marked off and stuff, um, but yes, so, and that is, you're, you're correct. And I do think too, I mean, we can say it until we're blue in the face, but the spiritual, I mean, we, Stephanie and I have been talking a lot about the initiates path. Sometimes when you're on the spiritual path, especially if your dharma is to be a healer yourself, the universe is going to literally blight you on fire. It's going to literally take some kerosene good gas, put it on you and light a match. Because you have to go through it. You have to in order. And the universe will keep saying, you sure you want this? You sure you want this? You, you just have to take it. And I, I say this all the time. You take it one step at a time. If you got to crawl, you crawl. And it's like Marnie Alton says, if you're, it doesn't matter how fast you're going if you're going in the wrong direction. But likewise, it doesn't matter how slow you're going if you're going in the right direction. You know, so you just keep crawling, you keep crawling, you keep one, you take the fear, you acknowledge the fear, you sit in the fear, you allow the body to express it. Yes, and don't ignore it. So I know it's super uncomfortable. Those days where you're either shitting your pants off or throwing up or crying and, and your eyes are swollen and, and you don't know what's wrong and everything's pissing you off. That's another thing too. When your nervous system is cleansing itself through the exercise, there are going to be days where everything annoys you, where you annoy you and you're going to be agitated and you're going to, you don't know what's causing it. It's because something's releasing through the nervous system. It's okay. That's why I'm having you journal too, is so that you have an outlet to, to process this, you know? And, and I think, I think that's the most beautiful thing. I don't know about you ladies, but you know, I've been at this game for a really long time now, and I, I am so used to understanding the logic behind the theory of spirituality. Um, but seeing so many people, especially in the support group, starting to figure it out, it's pretty beautiful, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And just, and I, I don't want to reiterate this, guys, and Stephanie and I talked about this the other day when I said, like, you're going to be going to the under, underworld multiple times. You might as well just buy lakefront property there because it's not one trip. It's going to be multiple trips. Um, but I just want to let you guys know just the fact that you all of a sudden understand what's going on, you've already shifted your vibration. Mm -hmm. Even when you feel super shitty and you're sweating and you're crying and you just want to punch a wall, just the fact that you've now made that connection, something already shifted in you. You've already, you've already shifted that vibrational freedom. You've already course corrected. So don't give up. Don't give up. You know, there's all these different uh, graphs they show where people think success is point A to point B in a straight line. It's this. It's mountains and valleys, mountains and valleys, you know, and, and that's, that's, that's just how it is. And that's how it is for every person. You're not alone. No one gets out of this world alive. You know, no, it, we were all going through this together and, and use and that's what I love so much about Sha our friend Shanti, as well as Ram Das. Like Shanti always says, you know, when that when the interesting stuff happens, like y'all, we're stuck under this firmament. We're stuck on Earth, and we have got the biggest roller coaster ride of our life presenting itself, starting 
Tuesday, November 8th, right? With our actually kind of now. And we have no choice but to buckle up and get on that roller coaster. And so instead of being like, oh, this fucking sucks, this is awful, be like, welcome it. Be like, let's go, Batman ride. Strap me in. Send me flying. Because this is the this is the alchemy, right? I think that's why um we're the emerald tablets are coming up now, because this is what Thoth was talking about. This is the alchemy. This is your secret weapon. Your secret weapon is not posting memes on the internet. Your secret weapon is not bitching about the elite because we already know that. That's the intellectual. We know that now. Your secret weapon is going, I'm going to heal me. I'm going to go into my own underworld. You, the outside is trying to give us hell. No, we can top that. We'll go into our own hell. And we'll come out the other side. Mm -hmm. I'm there. You're there. You're like, I'm here. <laughs> For those who didn't see my video, our video the other day, yep, <laughs> underworld all week. Bucky. Yep. <laughs> yep. And and it's all, it's all your shit. It, that's the that's the fun part. It's all you. It's all your shit coming up. <laughs> I laugh because I've been there many times. <laughs> I can commiserate. I've been here, just closer to home. Yeah. Well, I mean, I listen. I was telling you, but that's that's how the universe does it sometimes. It's going to take away your comfort. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Did that tenfold. I mean, I, I, I can't explain. Like, when I'm in India, there have been times, especially my first trip to India, I wish I had been. That would have been a very interesting reality show to film someone's first trip to India day by day, hour by hour. Because the first month, you don't know what you're like. What the fuck did I just sign up for? Mm hmm. And it's not the it's not the country. I, when I went to India the first time, I was excited about traveling to India and ex experiencing the culture. But then you add in the classes, of getting up at two o'clock in the morning, getting your ass handed to you in the Mysore room, then going to Sanskrit classes, and then all on top of that, you're dealing with a different culture, and so you're being triggered more by Mother India because. You're doing the work on top of it. Does that make sense? So what would not probably trigger you if you were just traveling around for shits and giggles really triggers you when you're doing the work. Yeah, when you're doing the work. And Reiki. I'm bouncing from hotel to hotel on bare minimum. And you're I working mean, with the master Mysore teacher in the morning. So it's and, and I love traveling when it's comfortable, but this is not comfortable. No. I'm on the freaking uh, Superman uh, roller coaster, and I'm saying, I'm going up the hill, and I'm like, oh, shit. Oh, shit. Why did I choose to go on this roller coaster? <laughs> yeah. Because I fucking hate coasters. Hate it. But here you are, this, this is the initiate's path. Because it's one thing to take, and so when we see this, and this is what starts to happen the more you go on this spiritual journey. And I'm not saying that you become immune to emotions. No, you don't at all. You still feel the emotions. But you start to realize that things that happen to you in life, God's not punishing you. There's no punishment coming from God. It's an opportunity for you to learn something. Right. And I think that's something that the, that I blame the church for everything because literally they're at the top of this darkness. We've been trained to believe that if something is uncomfortable, then it must be wrong. Listen, we're the survivors. Our ancestors went through plagues, went through great strides and, and to get us where we're, we're tough. We, we can handle we can. And that is one thing, too. I will say working in the slums, I realized there was a moment where I kind of realized, even though I love being a Westerner, like I, I love the Western world too, but working in the slums and seeing the way that these, these children especially lived and being in their houses, like being in their trash houses and seeing literally trash houses made of trash and literally being in a house where there is no bathroom. They all go to the bathroom outside where the children ha don't have toys, where the children have no records. So if they go missing, 
there's no gut. I mean, we bitch about our birth certificates, but the positive side of that is that we have a record. You know, if any of the three of us go missing, we have an actual record of our existence. These kids don't have that. And so when I started the first, my first trip, when I really started working in the slums, I would watch them. I would go into the slums and I would kind of like watch the kids and the adults too. And a lot of them, I would see joy in their faces. And I thought, how interesting is this? My existence, my life compared to theirs, I'm daddy, rock, daddy, what was Warbucks? Is that from Annie? Was that daddy Warbucks? The I'm daddy Warbucks compared to them. I have endless amounts of money compared to them. Now, not in the United States, I don't. In the United States, I'm very much struggling. But in India, with the rupee, with the, the, the transference, I'll give you guys an example. So for me, I'm sorry, I think somebody's outside. My dog's barking. For me to buy a meal in India for myself at like a Western cafe, because they do have, thank God they have Western cafes or I would never eat because I don't like Indian food. It would be like 200 rupees for a meal. That's high in India for pricing. Do you know how much that is in US dollars? Roughly about a buck fifty, two dollars. That's what I'm saying. So in India, I have so what that taught me being long story short, that's why I'm saying I'm not rich here, but I, I am there. And being in the slums and watching these children, and here I am, I'm like, man, I complain because my iPhone runs out of battery quickly, or my iPad's messing up, or our, I, you know, I don't have the latest MacBook. But here I am watching these children who literally, literally don't have a pot to piss in. Like, that's where that saying probably comes from. They literally don't have a pot to piss in, and they're happy. And so I realized one of the biggest disservices that the Western world has given me personally is comfort. Mm. And what a blessing that they were able to find the comfort in the uncomfortable. They were able to accept what was. Whereas for me, as someone who had everything compared to them, I was struggling and they weren't. And so that was a huge lesson for me to learn. And so I just want to express that, especially to the Westerners, not just, it's not just Americans, it's Canadians, it's Europeans, it's Australia, anybody who comes from a first world country, you were created to be uncomfortable. You can handle it. I promise, I promise you can handle it, you know? Um, and, and I just, every time I feel myself getting that way, like I would love to live in a bigger place. I would love to live, you know, there's things I kind of get pissy about, but I'm like, no, because there's somebody across the world right now who doesn't even have a fucking toilet, you know? Um, and so anyway, anyway, my point is being uncomfortable is a good thing. Because that's what's going to cause the shift. That's what's going to cause the change. That's also what's going to cause the... And I said before I started filming, I wanted to touch a bit on equanimity too. Because that's a huge um, concept in the spiritual world. And what do I mean by equanimity? Having equanimity. When we go about our lives, when we go about living our lives, there are certain things we fight for that we stand up against. We want to do the right thing. We want to make sure we are fighting for the right thing. But what happens if the right thing doesn't happen? Are we going to be okay within ourselves to accept that? Does that make sense what I'm saying? Does that make sense? So I'm going to ask you guys that are watching this, and I let's say that the flip doesn't happen for another five years. Are you going to be okay with that? And if the answer is no, then that's where your work lies. It's kind of like they say, like, when you're looking for a relationship, the minute you stop looking, the relationship appears. It's like the minute you relax into the faith of the higher realms, into the dharma of, of what's happening, and you have that faith, you can relax into equanimity. Does that make sense? It's it's so hard to do, guys. Like, I still struggle with this. this is I'm not saying this as someone who's conquered this, like... This is still part of my practice too. 
Just see everything as an opportunity. That's why I love how Ram Dass always says, like, you know, I, I say it a lot, like, oh, this exercise pissed me off. Interesting. Interesting. Oh, this is bringing this up. Interest. That's, and that's coming from a place of equanimity, of just being the watcher. Like as Stephanie says, you can't kill a soul. You can't kill a soul. So once you realize that, where does the fear go? It goes because you, there's nothing you can do to kill your soul. This is all just a learning experience for all of us. Anyway, um, mm -hmm. next life, Venus. I want to go learn. <laughs> next life, I want to learn at Venus. I want to do their their learning sounds a lot more fun than ours. So, <laughs> talk about that sacral chakra. That is where they do a lot of learning. <laughs> 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 so, yeah, Earth, Earth is master class. Let's let's hit on that too. Yeah, Earth is like Harvard and Yale and Cambridge combined. You signed up, you got accepted into like the creme de la creme of third density schools. Mm -hmm. That's how tough you are. That's how tough your spirit is. So take that and be like, okay, fuck you programming. Like, I got accepted to this school. That means I can hack it. Mm -hmm. Yep. So I don't know where I read this recently, um, but it said that Earth has over a hundred times more catalysts for learning and growing than any other third density or higher density planet. Yeah. Hundred times more. I hundred times. Well, and let's talk about this too. So the law of one, we know that the earth is also ascending as well. So earth will eventually be fourth density as well. And as I've talked about with the with the yoga practice, sometimes it's darkest before the dawn. Mm -hmm. So what's happening to Mother Earth right now? What the I mean, I feel better about my life. <laughs> it's sometimes darkest right before the dawn. It's dark. It's pitch black. Yeah, so that when you're in that dark night, that's why it's called a dark night of the soul. When you're there, keep going. Because it's about to be dawn. A new day is about to break. Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't know what's going to happen, but it's coming. I know, Emmy, you had some progress, didn't you? You text oh, us. Oh, I did. I did. This morning, um, finally, it's been, I don't even know how many weeks, probably two months now since I started my committed Ashtanga practice. And today, finally, um, I got through the sun salutations and the foundational postures. Um, I wouldn't say with ease, but it was not a, a deathly struggle like it has been. And Bryce has me doing these um, drills with the blocks to strengthen my shoulders and I was literally able to get my ass another inch off the ground, <laughs> pushing on these blocks. I'm like, yes. who needs weights when you got your own damn body? Like, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's amazing. And so you start to see, we call that in Ashtanga, we call it the Mysore magic. When something you thought was impossible, all of a sudden starts to seem possible. And that's because of the grit. She would have not. It's like resistance training. If Emmy had not committed and stayed on that track of working through that, she would not have the breakthrough she had today. Uh, because that resistance is what brought her the breakthrough. So, and I know Stephanie's filling out hardcore. Stephanie picked like the hardest course on earth to take. Because she said, I'm going to get Reiki attuned and I'm going to work with a master Ashtanga teacher all during the time that the universe, the planets are doing this. So she literally was like, you know, I've had 16 years on this course. Stephanie was like, give it to me, give it to me hard, give it to me now. <laughs> I don't know what my soul was saying. <laughs> if this has been, guys, when I say this, this freaking week has been no joke. It's been no joke. And I've had to do it while taking care of a dog and a teenager all in one. Extra credit um, homework. <laughs> biting my tongue at just like, I've run into every roadblock. I go to check in at a hotel. I run into another roadblock. I, okay, I'm just going to be real. I'm just going to be very, very real with everybody. I walked into a hotel and had to sleep there 
full-blown infestation of roaches in one of them. I cried all night. I couldn't come out of the room because there was fighting happening all around the hotel place. So it was in a sketchy area. Dumbass me did not read the reviews. However, Emmy's like, we'll look up the spiritual meaning to roaches. And I was like, holy fuck. And what it meant was making it through against all odds is what the spiritual meaning is to that. And Needless to say, it was the most disgusting. Now, I'm not afraid of them, but sleeping with an infestation of them around me was quite traumatizing. I'm still recovering from that. Okay. You know? Um, on the bright side, it wasn't an infiltration of spiders. So there's, there's a light side of this, okay? Because I would have I had a heart attack died in my sleep. Needless to say, I didn't really sleep that night. Um, and so, yeah, I'm on literally the hyperdrive crash, crash course of spirituality. I don't know what the F my soul was thinking. Can I tell you what I see when I see your soul, Stephanie, signing up for this? When I see my mind's eye? I see this, like, wild cowgirl on a, like, soul. It's like, yeah, yeah. And then you came into the body and your body's like wait a minute, but your soul's like, yeah, let's do this. And can we talk about how you said to me, cause you had done some divination to figure out which hotel to go to. And you kept saying, why did my divination tell me to pick this particular hotel? And the whole time I was thinking, I know why. I know. Okay. Like you thought your divination was wrong. I was like, no, your divination was dead accurate. Like there was a reason why your divination was like, yeah, go here because there's a, there's an obstacle here. Can you hack it? Let's get you through it. Let's, 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 here's your next course. So that's why I want to tell you guys, like, we have to break this programming that anything that's uncomfortable is wrong because most of the time uncomfortable is right. And it's God saying, keep going, keep going. Next time anybody thinks their back pain is terrible, just think of me in the roaches, okay? Well, it's, it's, I mean, and the funny thing is, is I was telling Stephanie, I have no problem with bugs, like none whatsoever. I would have been probably been fine there. I would have just been like, whatever. But, uh, but, but for me, it would have been something else. Like when I went to India, so I have a huge phobia of rats, like huge phobia. Like I have passed out seeing a rat before. I don't know why. It doesn't really matter. That would have been fine for me. The little rats, I would have made friends with all of them, but. Well, when I got on an airplane and went to India, I knew full well that I was going to have to deal with rats. It's just a part of, of, of the ecosystem there. I knew full well that was coming and that I was going to have to breathe through it. And so I forced myself. There was one day um, this rat was up in the daylight. I don't know. I thought they were nocturnal. But we were sitting outside the coconut stand. It was it was like right at the break of day. And so I just finished my practice. I was all sweaty and gross. And I was sitting. We uh, After practice, we usually, there's a coconut stand. A lot of the students will kind of sit for a minute and have a coconut and like come back to life a little bit. Like <laughs> find, you know, find it before they head home. And I was sitting out there by my friends. And I could see across the street, which is, the street's not very wide. This big fucking rat made its way out of the gutter, nonchalantly, kind of like a New York rat where it's like, hey, what's up? You know, not scared of you to grab some coconuts and take it back down into the gutter, probably to its rat family. And I first saw it and I could feel myself kind of like my heart rate rising. And I was like, no, Bryce, just breathe, just breathe. And I watched it. I made myself watch it. Kept breathing through it. I kept breathing through it. I've had rats come into my apartments in India before that I've had to deal with. Um, one day in lead class, a mouse ran across the floor and the whole first row like jumped up. You know, so I knew full well that that was going to be an issue. Now, spiders, I'm totally fine with. I don't, I usually just leave them. Um, I, even walking to the shala early in the morning, the gutters are really deep in India and the street dogs hunt the rats in the morning so it's like two o'clock in the morning and it's actually kind of interesting to watch them because they're so quiet the way they can dive down and so i'm walking and i'm seeing these street dogs on either side of me like quietly dive down into the gutters to go hunting and it's horrific when you see them come up with a rat like that's and so i would tell myself just keep your eyes in front of you keep your eyes in front of you keep your eyes in front of you so the universe is going to bring you 
the things that are going to trigger the healing. And the things that are going to trigger the healing are the things you hate the most and make you the most uncomfortable. Bugs. Yep, bugs, everybody. So her divination told her to go where she needed to go. Here's the thing. When I got there, the room was clear. Those suckers are also nocturnal. So I go to bed, and I'm like, oh, my God. What did I just do? And then there's all these, like, fights happening outside. And I'm like, well, I can't just go to my car and empty out all of my luggage and make sure these things are in my luggage at the car and stay in my car tonight because there's all these people fighting everywhere. That was actually my it's just the city. <laughs> it's just how a city is. I know, and I, 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 you know, a lot of times when we come into that fear too, we have to, and that's why it's good to have somebody that you can call because I remember texting you saying, listen, if they're drug dealers, Stephanie, they're not going to bother you. They're businessmen. You have to think of them as businessmen. They don't want to get arrested. They're not going to, they're not going to bother you. You know, like you, you have, you know, to have, to have that moment of kind of like that come to Jesus moment to kind of calm the nervous system down. And it is shocking because where you live, it's very quiet at night. It's just nature. And so then to come into a city, a big city, I mean, Atlanta is bigger than Boston. Um, it's bigger than a lot of it. It's the New York of the South. And so you're in a big city. And so to hear the sounds of a city are going to shock your nervous system. But we need the nervous system to get shocked. I think there's a very, very specific reason why you had to leave Connecticut to do this training. Because it's not just, that's what you start to learn. It's not just about the course. It's not just about the teacher. It's also your life that's happening in your life around the course and the teaching too. It's all part of it, if that makes sense. That's why Mother India is also a part of the teaching when you go to India. It's not just the school. It's not just the ashram. It's the country as well. And as Ashtanga people will tell you, Mother India is the toughest teacher of them all. Hmm. I remember my first trip, I got, when I got my first round of Delhi Belly, which happens to everyone, where you're just... Because they have different parasites, right? So when Indians come here, I'm sure they have the same thing. It's different parasites. So your body just has to get acclimated. So they tell you when your stomach gets that upset to go and get Coca-Cola. Because Coca-Cola can be used at that point as almost like medicine to help calm your stomach. And so I went to the local grocery store, which we call Loyal World. And I got really triggered because they couldn't find any Coca-Cola. And I went to the sales girl and I said, Coca-Cola. And she goes, oh, no, finished 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 well I got pissed and I was like because I was I wasn't feeling good I was triggered I couldn't just go and get on a plane and go back home I was in the middle of small town India and I said no it's not finished I'm from Atlanta this is where Coca-Cola I'm from where Coca I'm from where Coca-Cola is from I have friends that work for Coca-Cola Coca-Cola is not finished well then I realized when they say finished they just mean they're out <laughs> but that's how triggered I was. So I just went to the store next door and got more Coca-Cola. But that's how, that's how, so it happens. These things happen. It's, it's part of it. It's part, I mean, I'm sure Emmy, you probably have, we talked about this, about the healing crisis and how things kind of come around your life. And like, you think you're going to take these courses or go take on this teacher and life is just going to magically change. Life does magically change. But nobody said that magical was going to be rainbows and unicorns. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and another thing, too, I want to say again, I know um, I said this in the, the video that you and I did, I think, um, day three or four of the challenge. Um, when you do the work and you purge and you release and your vibration is being raised, it can... Mm -hmm cause friction and tension in the household because your other members of your household are not at that vibration yet. So what happens is our frequency is raised and everybody around us turns into an asshole. <laughs> it just is what it is. It wasn't until after my third Reiki class that I realized I was like, this has got to do with these 
uh, frequency changes in me. And so I, I contacted one of my teachers and I'm like, this is what's going on. And this is what has happened every time I have taken a class. And they're like, oh yeah, your vibration is higher than the people in your house. And don't worry, you'll entrain them. I'm like, entrain. And it's amazing because when we're vibrating at a higher uh, frequency, when we're around people for a extended period of time, our vibration will entrain, meaning it will raise theirs, almost like when you have a tuning fork and you ding a tuning fork and you bring another tuning fork next to it, the second tuning fork will start vibrating at the same frequency of the first one. That's what has to happen in your household. And it usually takes, you know, four days to a week or so. And it can be really, really irritating and off-putting. I mean, even animals, even my animals would get wacky sometimes. So I just wanted to mention that again, because even with shadow work and exercise and yoga, I'm noticing that I, when I, um, go through a particular struggle and my vibration is raised, I'll notice the irritation in my husband and I'll be like, and I'll just let him know. I was like, Hey, I've been doing this work. You know, he's familiar now. I'm doing this work. I think my vibration is changing. I think we're just a little bit out of tune and then we can just give each other some space and, you know, come back at another time. If we're irritated again, we'll just give each other a little bit more space. And usually just a few nights of sleeping in the same room together, we're fine. But not knowing that, our house was in an uproar for like half a week. Yeah. And it was it was kind of difficult because here I am integrating these new energies. And that's a process in and of itself. Stephanie, I'm sure you can attest. Integrating new energies is a process in and of itself. You know, my body is going through a major purge because it just it works on a cellular level. So I'm going through all this friction and change. And then everyone around me is so irritated. <laughs> so I'm going through that a little bit right now. So, you know, um, my dog has never been on a road trip before. She's pissed. She keeps giving me RBF. Okay, rusty bitch face. And, and you know, Grace knows my dog very well. She is a, she's a little diva. She's got attitude she um yeah she's uh she likes things to be her way very stubborn she's part husky so anyways that's coming out in her um she hates this road trip i can tell she hates it except going hiking we went hiking the other day she loved that um and then even though T tyler loves to travel and he likes bouncing from hotel and all that kind of stuff but i can tell at the same time i think he wants to be able to go out and have an adventure so and there's not all the food you can eat like in when we go home so that that becomes a problem you know so i can only get so much at a time and, and everything like that so i'm dealing with their energies like you know he's complaining she's just do you know she's giving me an attitude and not listening to me they kind of defiant on this trip so i'm dealing with that and then i have the people at home who have they, they don't get why I'm doing this. They're like, well, that's irresponsible. You know, so, which is that, you know, Bryce and I talked about this. It's that programming, right? They don't understand. Well, if you don't have that kind of money, why are you doing it? And it's like, yeah, but you're not going to understand even if I explain it to you. You know what I mean? So, yeah, you're dealing with all these surrounding energies. Thank God I have, like, you girls, you know, um, Cindy's there to support too. She's the one teaching me the Reiki. Todd has been my teacher for the yoga, but thank God I have all these other people like you guys to help me get through it or else I'd be, I don't know where the hell I would be right now. <laughs> the, well, think uh, about what you're learning in the process. Like I told you, like there's a lot of people that will buy a ticket to end. Like we, so I have a 10 year visa to India. It actually expires in 20. <laughs> 25. A lot of people get the 10 year visa. So what does that mean? That means that I can come in and out of India for as long as I want for 10 years. Okay. So what people do a lot of times is they buy a one way ticket to India without any money to come home. 
and they they go on faith that when they get to India they can work and so they'll do like like a lot of Ashtanga teachers are also Reiki practitioners or massage therapists or cuppers or um they do acupuncture um and so they get to the school and we have like boards and they'll just put their services up and they'll charge Indian prices. So they're not overcharging you. So it's really great for the students. Cause we can get a, I can get a lot of shit done in India for really cheap. Um, but they go and they don't have the money to pay for that ticket back. And they make the money while they're there to pay for the ticket back. And so I was thinking about that, like how you were raised and, what a disappointment that is for your parents and your siblings to not experience that, to not allow themselves to get to a place. Because the person like you that took the chance, you're gaining so much knowledge from this. And you're gaining more of a, st a stable faith as you walk through this with the money, just like my, my colleagues and peers who go and have to rely on working in India just to be able to buy their ticket back to America or Europe. How much more a character is being built in them than just sticking in their own hometown always. You're purely relying on faith. You're per and that character is being that wisdom. I mean, Todd can tell you stories of the stuff he had to do in India when he was back in the nineties and it was worse for him in the nineties than it was for us in the two thousands. I mean, I said when he got to Bangalore, I mean, in Bangalore now, at least you have like one of the luggage comp that comes on the, the moving compartment, the carousel back then they just dropped your luggage off. There were chickens running around and you had to literally find a flashlight to find your luggage. No one helped you, you know, um, they had to go every morning after practice. He had to go pump his own water for the day from the well and carry the buckets of water up to his apartment for the day. So for all of his bathing needs, his laundry, his dishes. I mean, the first time I got to the, my first trip to India, there wasn't washing machines. And so we had to bucket wash, um, which you bucket bathe too. So but bucket bathing is a huge thing as well. So I had to clean my clothes by hand. And when I first went, I was like, oh, this will be fine. This will be easy. Have you ever tried to clean your clothes in a bucket? In and my tub, I was dirt ass poor one time. Yep. Mm -hmm. Well, we have to clean it in the bucket. Then you have to take a rock and beat the clothes to get the suds out. So you beat your clothes and then you hang them up to dry outside. They're sopping wet. Now, here's the thing, too, that I realized. The smog in India is almost as bad as it is in a city. And so your white shirt is not white after you wash it. And I literally, this is going to be so gross. And I apologize if this, Todd told me once that I needed to write a book, a beginner's guide or an idiot's guide to going to India, beginner's guide to going to India and tell people what to expect. Ladies, you're going to India. You need to bring Monistat. I'm dead serious you will get a yeast infection big time. And it's because you're bucket washing your clothes. You're hanging them out to dry little insects lay eggs in your clothes. And I, there have been times where you're sitting out in front of the shala waiting to go in. And it's so bad for some girls that they just start scratching. They don't care anymore. They just start scratching. The first time I went to India, thank you, God, for my friend Belinda, who's from Austria. I love you, Belinda, so much. She already knew this, and so she had Monistat from Austria, and so she brought me some. Thank God I had used this medication before because it was all in fucking German, <laughs> so I would have I would have been fucked if I didn't know what to do with it. Um, and I, you can't find that in the pharmacy in a small town. They don't sell tampons. So I have a trunk in India that's full of tampons for the United States. And these are things you learn. But, but when you're in the process of learning these things, it's not comfortable. So my first trip to India, after about two weeks of just feeling gross because my clothes were not at the level of cleanliness that I was used to them being. And I did not know how to, I obviously did not know how to bucket wash. I did not know how to beat the clothes properly with the rock. Um, I found a service that was really cheap for me. And they would do my laundry. And then they explained to me that I needed to be ironing my underwear 
and ironing my yoga pants because bugs laid their eggs in the yoga pants, in the tight pants. These are things, guys, that people go through. I, when I say it's not pretty, it's not pretty. It's not pretty. I mean, I look back at some of my pictures from my first trip to India, my first month, and you can see the stress in my face. Because again, as I said earlier, if I was just there traveling for shits and giggles, all of those obstacles might have been kind of funny. But because I was intensely working on my practice, intensely chanting, which is a whole other modality that is a that Todd wants to actually start with Stephanie, that brings you to a whole okay. other level. Because I was doing all of this, because I was doing pranayama, because I was doing ev all these classes, and I was getting up into my nerves were shot. And then the okay. universe was like, here you go. It was like sprinkles on top, like confetti. Here's some other stuff. Here's the yeast infection. Here's this. Here's that. You know, we always say in India, for the students that are Westerners, you have one, you can have one meltdown. You're allowed one meltdown before you're an asshole. Because everyone has at least one meltdown in public in India. Because their nerves are just shot. And I don't think my friend Chris is going to might be saying this. Because Chris is very easygoing. I met him in India. He, he laughs a lot at everything. But we had been out all day. And the funny thing about the rickshaw drivers, Mysore is a very small town. I know my way around Mysore now. I very easily can get around Mysore. But the rickshaw drivers, for some reason, get lost a lot, which is still a puzzle I can't solve because they're from Mysore. If I know my way around Mysore, how do you not know your way around? And you're a literal rickshaw driver. So we were on the other side of Mysore. We had been to Devaraji Market. We were tired. We could have walked back, but he was like, you know what? We're like, let's just get a rickshaw. I'll just make things easier. So we pulled this rick We flagged down a rickshaw. Chris asked, do you know? And he gave the address, our address, in Gokulam. And the rickshaw driver bobbled his head. Now, we've talked about the head bobbling before. In India, my Indian friends have tried to teach me that there are different bobbles that mean different things. But as Westerners, it just looks, it all looks the same to me. So the rickshaw driver bobbled his head at Chris. And Chris looked at that rickshaw driver and he lost it. I don't know what that means. Like, just lost it. And that was his one. And then we got in the rickshaw. He was fine afterwards. But we always say you're allowed one meltdown in public before you're labeled an asshole. Atlanta, do I, do I get a free pass on, like, losing my shit in Atlanta? In Atlanta, they'll just think you're crazy anyway. They don't even look. Oh, I don't know. Because, like, for me, it it's kind of like that culture shock. You know, I, I grew up in about 20 minutes south of Hartford in a town called Berlin, Connecticut. And it's a regular suburban town. Now I've been out of that type of type of town for now, close to ten, maybe you'll nah, actually I would say ten or eleven years now. And I live in a very quiet town. Much doesn't happen there. You get pulled over very easily for speeding because the cops are bored, you know. And so coming into the city the hustle and bustle of the city. And even outside in Marietta, where it's just a regular old suburban town outside of Atlanta, a lot for me. It's a lot. The, the energy is like overwhelming. And now if I had like a beach nearby, I could probably handle it a lot easier because that helps, right? But I don't have that. So I've been going through the culture shock of being in a city too. And I've been driving in and out of the city every morning to go to Mysore. So um, I, I drive the city like a boss now. <laughs> uh, like, and, and the thing is, I was so fearful to drive in and out of Atlanta every morning, 530 in the morning. But now I just get in my car and I just do it. And it's like regular old life now. You know, it's I don't. You don't have it. I overcame a fear there. Now it's like overcoming the fear of like, well, where am I going to, am I going to have a roof over my head in a couple of days? Because what I do is I book a couple of hotels or I book a hotel out where my money reaches and then, okay, I get a couple more readings or sell more jewelry or whatever I've been doing because I'm working for it. Obviously I'm working for it. I'm not just being handed 
which is what which is what the people in india do too they work their way through it yeah, yeah. so i'm working my way through this and um that's my next that's that's a big that's actually a huge fear for me and i'm just explaining this because now we we talked about this the other day bryce my dad passed away when i was four and a half well that's a big big shock to the root chakra because that's your daddy is security you know so if you even had a bad relationship with your father that's going to create a shaking in your security which is your malabunda muladara muladara Mul 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 is the chakra malabunda is the lock yeah okay. muladara so this is really bringing up those security fears uh, as much as I like to travel and bounce around and just, I can just for the moment create plans where I'm not bound to being in one place at one, you know, all the time. I don't like staying in one spot all the time. I've always been like that. I still like the security. So this has had me facing the fear of not having security and relying completely on me. And so and what is security? Security is also comfort. Yes. Yes. And so whatever your wherever that wound is, that's what's going to be presented. When I was first a single mom, I, I had security from six years old to eighteen years old. I lived in the same house between those ages. Before that, though, things were a little interesting. I moved a few times. I was bouncing around from my mom to my dad to my grandparents. Things were in very very unstable dad passes away things become even more unstable and then suddenly i moved, I moved from florida to connecticut up until i was 18 and so it's bringing up those childhood wounds of that instability um but even when i was a young adult um uh, being a single mom i had been homeless for about four weeks of time during a little you know period of time after i gave birth because i had up and had to get away from my son's father, who was very, very narcissistic. Um, so it's bringing up those wounds as well, so that I can heal from it. I, I see what's happening. It doesn't make it easy, but I see what's happening. So I'm just explaining this so people are going through these types of things. I'm going to present them to you. And I see it's, all this it's what you signed up for. When you signed up to heal, you have to examine the... You know, in the opening chant, it's I, I, you're asking for your poisons to come up so they can be healed. What are your poisons? They're your wounds. So no one's going to come. There's no magical. Listen, if I found the magical fairy that could come around and just pop and just take it all away, I'd be leasing that bitch. I'd be pimping her out. Like I'd be a billionaire by now. You know? So, so there, in order for us to, to, I don't know why we think as humans that to heal, we're going to bypass the wound and then put the healing on it. No, we have to actually examine what happened. And that is true. And I will say too, Stephanie, you know, because of your life circumstances, and I can see why your soul agreed to this. Not only is it you being in a city where you're not used to it, and, and Atlanta's a really, I, I want to express that. Like when I say she's in a city, Atlanta's half the size of New York, but it's bigger than Boston. It's bigger than DC. Atlanta's, it's bigger than Miami. Atlanta's a huge city okay. and it's a driving city. So, I mean, I, when, when I, listen, kids who grew up in Atlanta are the best drivers. Because they learned how to drive, they I mean they put where their feet were held to the fire at fifteen years old, and they had to learn. You know, it's 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 bad. And so the fact that so let's look at what happened to your nervous system. So not only have you been in this tiny tiny town, but you also haven't had because of the life circumstances that you were put under, you haven't had the opportunity to really travel that much. And so you're not only moving yourself from the comforts of a small town to a big city and having to deal with living in a big city, because that's what you're doing right now is you're actually living here. You're not here for vacation. You're here living and learning and studying. But your nervous system is also on shock because you're traveling. Um, we call that Vata derangement. That's an actual thing that happens to your nervous system when you travel around a lot. Now, for someone like me, 
when lockdown happened, I would fly like 10, 15, sometimes 20 times a year. I was going international all the time. I was constantly on an airplane, constantly traveling. And so when lockdown happened, I had the opposite happen where all of a sudden I was grounded indefinitely. So the opposite adrenaline shock, the opposite, because the body and the, the, the body and the mind, and I am Vata and, and traveling is Vata. That's why it's called Vata derangement. Traveling is a Vata, is a Vata energy. I have a lot of Kappa and my moon is in Virgo. So that's a grounding. And so for me, that's why travel is so easy for me. It's because that's, that's feeding into the, that's what I am. I'm a, and I'm also an Aquarian. Aquarians are wanderlust. We're air, air, Aquarian air, about to air. So you think about being an airplane in the air, um, you know, and so, but the word, but that's bad. What, what gets bad for me though, is the, the jet lag, which is um, feeds into the Vata, which can feed into the anxiety of Vata. So that I have to be aware of that when I travel is that jet lag can affect me worse than it'll affect a Kappa. You know, so that's just why we get to know the energy. But I want you to acknowledge that. So not only are you moving yourself from a very, and I told Tyler the other day, I was, you know, he was talking about your hometown in Connecticut and like how he didn't like it because it was so small. And I said, yeah, I've been in I, Quakeway, Zimbabwe, tiny town in, in Africa. That was the smallest town I've ever been to until I came to Stephanie's house. <laughs> Our town was smaller than Quakeway, Zimbabwe. And had a small, a tiny town. So it's a tiny town. It's tiny. I didn't I grew up in, I mean, my, my hometown is very similar to Marietta, the same hustle and hustle, lots and lots of people. But I I tend to like. You got, but, but you're Kappa and you got to a small town and you got sedentary there. Now I have, I have a nice mix. I, I, I am a Tridosha. I am an air sign. My sun sign is an air. So, I mean, I could go either way, but because I got so used to because I was so, I was there for so long, I think. A pattern. There was there, a pattern that was created. You no, know, funny. Guess what? We're going to put you in the city for a little while. <laughs> so let's, so let's look at that patterning. Cause we talked about the burning up, right? So that's why we have yoga fevers. That's why getting a fever is normal for, if you get a low grade fever, you're detoxing. That's normal. It's called the yoga fever. And so yeah. what, what happens when we have, when we have patterning, in our body so she got stuck in a pattern and she wanted to change that pattern so what did the universe said the universe oh you want to change this pattern okay here's what we're going to do we're going to send you to a city we're going to we're going to trigger your security system and so all of that patterning is now burning up and that's what she's feeling the friction of that patterning burning up but we can't accept a new pattern until the old pattern is gone can't right. build on top of it, right? Yeah. And so that's what you're going through. Is the, the control, that's why I call it controlled demolition. You're, contr you're using it as a controlled way. You're not going to go homeless. You're not going to be sleeping in your car. You know people. I'm here. I'm just down this. I'm just down in the city. You know a few people in Marietta now. You know where my parents live. You're not. You're not going to. So that whole. Worst case scenario is not going to happen. You know? <laughs> and that's where, on, on this trip, like, we'll hang out, but I'll, I'll let Stephanie kind of be by herself for a while because I know she's got to, like, process. And she was the same price three times. Yeah. Because I know, she, I know, and I'm doing that because I know, I know she's got to have, you know, that's where the teacher in me comes in. Like, the friend in me wants to come in and be like, it's okay. It's okay. I got you. I got you. But the teacher in me is like, no, I have to let her kind of <laughs> be by herself for a while. I want to hang out with her every day. But I'm like, no. I, the, some days she needs to be by herself because she's here to learn. She's here to go through the, the, you know, I had to be left by myself, you know. That's the hardest thing in India. That's why people in India, the Westerners that go there get so close is because we're all we have, really. But there are times where you have to make that decision. Like, I actually need to go home and be myself by myself for today because I need to, I need to not distract myself. I need to process. I mean, that's why people get in trouble a lot in India because there's a lot of hanky panky that happens in India outside of the shawl. And I think it's because people there's a lot of heat, there's a lot of tapas, there's a lot of emotions coming up, and I think people get also want to distract themselves. 
And so they find a Mysore boyfriend or a Mysore girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Well, it's 3.33. Oh, wow. That's, that's, that's Yashua saying, yes, girls. <laughs> <laughs> reading coming up in a couple of minutes and I have a child looking at me like why are we taking so long and I have a dog in back of me who needs to go out and well like, yep and you know Tyler and and your dog their souls agree to do this too so <laughs> <laughs> anyway guys well we'll go ahead and end it here we'll do another shadow work video soon I know that we just want to talk about the astrology and you have a little misery loves company right like i just we want to acknowledge that all you guys doing the shadow work we know it's rough we know it's hard we know you're crying we know things hurt but yay 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 <laughs> welcome to the shit show i mean literally we should make t-shirts that say shadow work challenge the hot mess express get your ticket <laughs> love it <laughs> you're not alone you're not alone that's why it's, that's why i created the sport group yeah Oh, and if anybody lives in Atlanta, I'm doing readings for live, so. Yep. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take Stephanie on Doll's Head Trail at some point this week. The creepy Doll's Head Trail. We'll, we'll take video of that. That would be a nice distraction. It's on the, it's on the <laughs> other side of it. I'm going to take you. I haven't even taken you. We have a village. Like, New York has a village. We have East Atlanta Village. We have a village here in Atlanta, too. I haven't even taken you to that side of town, Stephanie. There's a whole world in Atlanta you have yet to see. So um, I'll take you through East Atlanta Village. And then uh, we'll go do Doll's Head Trail and get creeped out. So, <laughs> All right, ladies. We love you guys. Leave us your comments down in the description or the comment section below. Again, we're being shadow banned, so share this if you can. Help us get the word out because we, we are all just walking each other home. We all have to go through the storm. We are the storm, so we got to go through it first so we understand that we are the storm. And so we, we all want to get to the other side of this, heal ourselves, move on, because what does Mr. T say? The best is yet to come. It is always darkest before the dawn. So, all right, guys, we love you. Join our signal support group. I'll put the link down in the description box below. And, um, yeah, anything else you ladies want to say before we part ways? Don't give up. Don't stop. Don't stop. Like that journey song, Don't Stop Believing. Yeah. Yeah. And if you really want a spiritual journey, buckle the fuck up. <laughs> Hello, buttercup. Here we go. <laughs> um... I will also approaches. What did I say in class on Sunday? Uh, channel your inner Jane Fonda. Feel the burn. Just lean into that burn. Anyone could be a guru. Channel Jane Fonda. Even though we know she's questionable. The teaching is, is pure. The, te the, the person is questionable. But lean into the burn. Feel the burn. Lean into it. It's there for a reason. So, all right. Love you guys. We'll talk to you soon. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.